I decided to add a pegboard wall to my laundry room for two reasons, organization and to cover up a bad drywall job. I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about this project. Installing a large pegboard wall all by myself was a bit of a daunting task. But all my worrying was silly. It wasn't that hard at all. Let me show you what I did. After planning out my project, which you can find more information about linked in the description below, I started by mounting furring strips to my wall. I added construction adhesive on the back, then temporarily secured the strips in place with brad nails, making sure the board was level before I nailed anything. If I could do this again, I'd check for level again after adding the nails, since I learned later that some of my furring strips were less level than I'd like. Then I added screws to the furring strips. These are the primary mechanism holding up the pegboard, so I made sure I got these screws into studs. Since my drywall was unpainted, this was pretty easy for me to see, but I've linked to my favorite stud finder in the description below if you're working with painted drywall. I repeated this process for each of the furring strips. On the second strip, you'll notice I was way off level with my initial placement. This made a bit of a mess with the construction adhesive, which I just cleaned off with water once I was done mounting the strip. Also, it's worth noting that if you ever want to take the pegboard down, the construction adhesive will be dried to your wall and could cause damage. I'm mentioning this because the construction adhesive isn't mandatory. I used it because I was doing this alone and it allowed me to place my strip and let go before adding the final screws. If you have a friend holding your furring strip in place for you, you could skip straight to the adding screws and ignore the construction adhesive and brad nail step. One more thing, your life will be better if you use an odd number of furring strips. I used six, but I wish I'd used seven. That way I could have had three furring strips for the top piece of pegboard, three furring strips for the bottom piece of pegboard, and one strip in the middle where the seam between the two pieces lands. Once all the furring strips were in place, I mounted the pegboard. To make it a little easier on myself, before I started I temporarily secured scrap pieces of wood on my middle furring strip right where I wanted the bottom of the top pegboard to land. That way, when I lifted the pegboard up, I could rest it on those pieces. Turns out, I only needed one piece in the middle, but you'll see me mount three here anyway. Then I lifted the pegboard into place, checked that it was level, and secured it with brad nails. Once again, the brad nails were a temporary hold until I could get the screws in place. I put screws across the top row every 12 holes, as well as on each end of the pegboard everywhere there was a furring strip. Finally, I removed the mounting blocks and added brad nails across the pegboard to secure it to the furring strip. I chose not to add screws in the middle of the pegboard, but if the pegboard starts pulling off of the furring strips, I can go back and add a couple. The bottom pegboard piece was a bit easier since I wasn't on a ladder, however my middle furring strip wasn't level. This meant that only one end of the pegboard could be screwed to the furring strip. Lesson learned, double check that everything is level. Then I worked on my electrical switches and outlets. I chose to cut the holes for these after the pegboard was mounted, since I had a Dremel that could limit the cut depth and I could see through the holes to know exactly where my outlets and switches were. Note that I did take the cover plates off before mounting the pegboard. Finally, I used electrical spacers to bump the switch out. They slide onto the screw that connects the switch to the wall. The final step was to make and attach the frame. I did each side of the frame as a separate piece and attached them all individually. For each piece, I attached two furring strips together at a 90 degree angle with wood glue and brad nails. One part will cover the space between the wall and the pegboard, the other will overlap the pegboard. Then I caulked the seam between them and wood filled any knots or holes. Finally, I painted each piece white. 
To attach the frame pieces to the pegboard, I applied construction adhesive to the pegboard, put the frame piece in place, then added brad nails at every furring strip. Since the frame won't be holding any weight, this should be more than enough to keep the pieces in place. Then the pegboard was done. I think it looks so much better. And if you think so too, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. And if you want more information on how to build a pegboard wall, including how I plan the project, a detailed cost breakdown, and a list of frequently asked questions, be sure to check out the blog post linked in the description below. Thanks, and don't forget to hit subscribe.